Yo, what's good, YouTube? Zam Crow here, aka Scoop, back with the CPC Season 7, and we've got week number three here. And my opponent actually dropped out of the league, so I picked up a mock battle with my buddy Ginger from the Pokemon Battle Federation. And uh, I'll talk about our squads for just a little bit. I'm actually going to. Hmm. I'm going to lead off with Bronzong. And I'm gonna talk about his team for just a second. So he has the potential for Jirachi, Manaphy, Z, Zygarde 50%, Mega Alakazam, Rotom Heat, Alolan Ninetales, Chestnut, Slurpuff, Z Aerodactyl, and Quagsire. So his Z move users are Zygarde 50%, which can use any Z moves outside of Omni Boosting and Evasion Boosting, and Aerodactyl, which can only use attacking Z moves. So pretty threatening squad. However, uh, our squad's pretty threatening too. Our Z move users being Tornadus Incarnate. Uh, our main one, which can use Omni, or excuse me, uh, status and attack in Z moves. And then Embor is our uh, only attacking Z move user with Clefable, Azumarill, Mammal Swarm, Greninja, Mega Sceptile, Snorlax, Bronzong, Rotom, and Oricorio to uh, support uh, the Black Mount Rockers for this match. So, um, he leads off with the Jirachi, and I'm going to lead off. Uh, he could taunt me, but I'm going to try to get my Stealth Rocks up here. And him going for U-Turn makes me think that he is more than likely a Choice Scarf variant. So that's valuable information. And uh, he gets some nice chip damage off here. I do have the Cassie Berry so that... Uh, oh no. Hold on just one sec. <laughs> oh no, that's right. Cassie. Cause see berries right. I thought I thought I had the Kibia berry for a second. I thought I, I thought I got those flip flopped, and that would have been very 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 unfortunate. So he goes into his road and hard here. So I'm actually thick fat mammal swine, and I have stone edge. So I'm gonna go hard into my mammal swine, and this is going to uh, this is going to prevent bolt switch. And if he goes for overheat, I'm not in too bad of a situation. And he does go for the uh, the bolt switch there. So now he's more than likely going to switch out into what, I'm not sure. I think my play is to just click Stone Edge here and I miss. So that's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, he misses his Will-O-Wisp though, so it kind of balances out there. If we can land this next, next Stone Edge, we'll be in an okay position. However, he's got, the, he's got the information now and he's just going to switch out into his Jirachi. So that's a fine play there. Um, not bad at all. I believe he can just go for Iron Head. Um, I'm debating whether or not I want to stay in. He can go for... Okay, let's see here. So, Rotom's not Scarf. That's confirmed. It switched its moves, though. Jirachi could be, could potentially not be. I think my best play is to go into Snorlax and scout what he wants to go for. And I do have the Earthquake, so I'm going to go into Snorlax. It goes for the Iron Head and it does 23%, uh, so not too bad. We can throw off an Earthquake here or just throw off a Return. I think, uh, I think Return's going to be the, an okay play because it could... Uh, it could condition him to think that we don't have Earthquake and we could catch him off guard with it later. Um, it also catches the Aerodactyl switch in. He could think that I'm Pursuit though and he might not want to switch out. This is a tough play. I could click Toxic here, predicting him to go in just to switch out in general. Um, a little bit of chip damage. I'm going to click Toxic predicting him to switch out. As he does go into the Aerodactyl, and we get that play right. Okay, so that was a fine play. Aerodactyl's pretty uh, pretty fat, so Return won't do much to it. It does have the ability to click Stealth Rocks here, though. And Stealth Rocks could be problematic. He did not bring... Um, I might want to keep... Clefable though. I was going to go hard into Clefable on this turn, but I'm, I might need Clefable later for the Slurpuff. Slurpuff could be problematic. I don't want to lose to uh, that. 
I do have bronze on go. However, a plus six drain punch could potentially knock this out. So that's something I'm thinking about. I think I'm just going to click uh, return here as his rocks are inevitable. And we do get some nice chip damage off on this uh, on this Aerodactyl here. I'm actually going to click return again. It's a no drawback play for me as uh, Stone Edge would have bounced off. But uh, he does miss the Stone Edge, which is unfortunate for him. I'm going to calc that and just see how much my Snorlax would actually take from a, let's say he's a uh, max attack, he's leftovers, say he's, uh, say he's adamant to give him the most damage output. Yeah, he's most, at most, doing 35% there, and I could uh, get leftovers back. And then I've got protect as well, so I could have clicked protect. So not a bad play. Um, it's a little bit unfortunate so far, especially with the Stone Age miss on the road. I'm pretty sure that I would have knocked that bad boy out. So he goes hard into his slurp up here. I think uh, I think I only have one play, and that's to go hard into Michael Fable and reveal that I'm unaware. And I'm just gonna click Moonblast here. Play rub does 45 with the crit. It's not gonna be able to do too much. We should be able to take him out here. Yeah, not bad. So, okay, I didn't know if he was going to bring this in or his Alakazam to just get the knockout. We are going to click Protect here as he reveals uh, Iron Head. So that's not bad. I'm going to go hard into Greninja. As he goes for Iron Head again. So, worst case scenario is he goes a little in nine tails on this turn. I'm gonna click Dark Pulse. All right, so I don't need Clefable anymore. I can allow this thing to go down now. As he misses his overheat, so that's not too big of an issue. I can just click knock off here. He gets a crit on the bolt switch, so it's not too big of an issue. Overheat into bolt switch probably would have knocked out um, despite the special attack drop, so that crit makes up for the miss uh, on the following turn. So I'm just gonna go back out into my Greninja here as he brings out his Jirachi. He bolt switched into the Jirachi for some reason. I'm just gonna click Dark Pulse. As I get a critical hit, but that didn't matter. It did 31% last time, so. This is fine. Um, so. I think I think I go into uh, bronze on here. As he goes for the, uh, ooh, he goes for the nasty plot. So that's a little bit different than expected. <laughs> I didn't uh, necessarily expect that play to happen. So I'm gonna click Gyroball here. I can't afford to let him get an Aurora Bell up as well. Um, and the only move he can knock me out with here is Hex or Dark Pulse. And he could, he could certainly have Dark Pulse. Um, or Hex, either one for Bronzong, specifically so that, you know, this thing could break Bronzong down so that Mega Alakazam could put in the work in the later parts of the game. My opponent switches out, though. Uh, I'm guessing he doesn't have coverage for me. Mm. But at this point, my play is to just click uh, Earthquake. I don't get flinched and down goes the Jirachi, so that's fine. Um, the play here is to always Gyro Ball because if he goes Alola Ninetales, then that drops, and if he goes Alakazam, I get the most damage output. And I do have the Kassib Berry, so that if he goes for the Shadow Ball, it should not knock me out from this range. However, he will be able to knock me out with the following one. Does Gyro Ball into a uh, Scarf U turn knock him out?
Yeah, Jar Ball's my only play here, so. Anything else would be a choke, I believe. Even if I switched out. He could predict me to switch out, but he could click Focus Blast or Psychic, predicting me to go out into Snorlax to be immune to the Shadow Ball, but I don't need to make that play. And uh, to be honest, he doesn't need to make that play either. So, <laughs> Gyre Ball actually puts him in range of... Uh, Of Shadow Ball. I mean, excuse me, of Ice Shard or U Turn. Puts him in range of Hell on the following turn, actually. So now the question becomes how fast is he? Do I risk Mega Sceptile here? I don't think I can risk it. I think I have to go green and you turn out. And then uh, let Mega Sceptile do the rest from here. Should be able to knock out with that Goofy Drink from this range. Yeah. And we get a nice, uh, nice victory here. So that's going to be... Uh, it's going to be a good game. I don't think, like, out, say, say if I landed my first Stone Edge, his Rotom would have been gone, more than likely. As as little as it took from my Dark Pulse from Greninja, it revealed to be Spadef, heavily Spadef invested, so it couldn't have been too uh, bulky on the physically defensive side, so Life Orb. Stone Edge from Mammal Swine probably knocked it out. I am adamant Max Attack. So that, more than likely knocked it out. And uh, he missed the Will Wisp on the following turn. So I don't think, I think that evened out. Missing Stone Edge and missing Will Wisp. The only thing that I disagree with was that he actually switched out the following turn. So uh, it, we could have basically had a replay there and see if Stone Edge landing would have actually knocked out. But yeah, he switched out to Jirachi too negligible damage and was able to get momentum from there um, there was what a crit a stone edge crit on his Jirachi as it come in but that, that it really didn't matter either and then uh, and I, I'm thinking that's it that's all there was really oh he had the overheat miss but he got the bolt switch crit on the following turn, so he was able to uh, balance that out. And then I got the Dark Pulse uh, crit on Rotom Heat, but it did 31% earlier, it did 31% with that crit, so that's uh, not even debatable either. So uh, yeah, all in all, pretty fun team. Uh, really surprised to not see Zygarde 50% or the Manaphy. I felt like a Rindo Berry um, Manaphy with Ice Beam was a nice lure for my Mega Sceptile. Also thought like a Banded Zygarde or DD Zygarde was really nice versus my squad with something like a Toxic to catch my most likely switch ins. And especially since Manaphy and Zygarde were on the same squad, um, there was no doubt that I was bringing an unaware Clefable. So a Banded Zygarde with Toxic to catch my Clefable switch in would be really nice. I've definitely thought that through. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it. Um, thank you, Ginger, for having this match with me. I know you didn't have to do that. You took time out of your day after uh, after a long tournament we had today, too. So that's something to think about. I appreciate you uh, taking the time out to build a squad and play me for however long this took. Um, took, like, maybe 15 minutes for you to build and then 15 minutes for the play. So that was pretty fun. Um, yeah, so we, so we get a 4-0 victory here. It's not going to reflect in our differential or anything like that. We will get a 3-0 victory, forfeit victory, and none of these knockouts from either side of the field will count uh, for the league. And uh, that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. The uh, guy had real life stuff come up, so he had to go. Anyways, that's going to be it. Let me know what you thought about the prep and the plays on both sides of the field. I didn't go too in-depth on my team, my team build or anything like that, so I will drop a pokey paste down below that you can check out and uh, 
you know, see my sets more in depth. Anyway, so that's going to be it. Leave a like, uh, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe, all the good stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.